We doing everything they talk about You know I'm everything a boss about Not putting work and gotta toss them out I'm really biting, they just barking out I'm really riding, they just parking now His street, what to talk about See the big H when I'm walking out What's going on, everyone? Welcome to an episode of Base Coverage presented to you by K Noah Teamwear. I'm your host, Jamal Clay. Before we get this thing started, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, drop a comment. Let's talk some ball as we break into, you know, the start of what we're going to call Media Week here on Base Coverage covering the ELF Championship game. I got a whole bunch of guests coming in this week to talk about the game, break down the game, make some picks, and give you a different per- perspective on things. So today, on, on the show, we got we got three quarterbacks joining to talk about the QB matchup we have uh, between the uh, Vienna Vikings and the Hamburg Sea Devils. Um, we got um, Jadrian Clark from the Ryan Fire. We got Jan Van Wright from the Cologne Centurions, and we got Connor Miller, uh, who played briefly for the for the Leipzig Kings. So it's going to be a good one. But before we dive into that interview a little bit, let's get into this quick uh, quick word from our partners over at K Noah Teamwear. Welcome back, everyone. As I mentioned before, this is base coverage, media week covering the ELF championship uh, game this Sunday in Klagenfurt between the Vienna Vikings and the Hamburg Sea Devils. Today, we have three quarterbacks that I brought on that I wanted to talk some ball a little bit, um, get their perspective, and break down the game from a quarterback mindset a little bit and guys that have played in the league. So uh, here we have Jadrian Clark from the Ryan Fire, Jan Bainwright from the Cologne Centurions, Connor Miller from the Leipzig Kings. So, fellas, what's going on? How you guys doing today? What's up? Thanks for having us. Most definitely, man. What's up, Jan, guys? You, everyone, everyone doing well over there? Yes, sir. Everybody's, everybody's fine. Everybody, I think, is recovering in the offseason, enjoying some free time. I hear you. I hear you. Well, let's dive into the game a little bit. And, you know, coming from uh, someone who's played in this game last year, Adrian, um, looking into this matchup a little bit, what do these two quarterbacks have to look forward to heading into heading into Sunday? I think uh, both of these guys, uh, Sally and uh, uh, Jackson, both, I think, played a little bit of Division two, Division three football. Um, so I think this might end up being the biggest crowd, biggest stadium they've ever played in. So uh, whoever can handle that early intensity of the huge crowd is going to have a huge advantage. Go out, don't make any mistakes, and just settle into the game. In those big games, it's really, really intense at the start. For you specifically, what did you take last year? Obviously, it didn't go the way you wanted, but what did you take from last year's championship game? I or advice, or advice an- that you would give these guys? I think in the big football games, it comes down to just like four or five plays, man. Yeah. Um, so biggest thing is to limit the mistakes. Um, let the game come to you. Don't try to force any big plays. Uh, just take the easy stuff at the quarterback position. Both of them are, have really, really talented teams around them. Good offensive lines, uh, good receiving core, good running back. So um, you don't have to be the star, either of these guys, with, with the teams that they have. Uh, I think it's whoever limits the mistakes out of the two quarterbacks is going to probably end up winning the game in my opinion. Yeah, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a crazy one for the fact that you know Salih obviously didn't start, but he's 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 been through this drill, he's been through the week, he's been through the preparation last year, and then we have a guy like Jackson Erdman, uh for Vienna, who you know this is gonna be his first time playing in the ELF championship game. But Connor, talking about Jackson a little bit, you know what is it what is it about Jackson? What is it about his skill set that makes him you know the quarterback he is now? Obviously, he had a great season, 2,800 uh, yards passing, 26 touchdowns. But what is it about Jackson that makes him who he is as a quarterback? I think he operates really well within that offense. Um, Coach Kaleke and their OC, Danny Mitchell, do a great job putting their players in positions to succeed. And, you know, when you have an offense that good with that offensive line, uh, the two Vegan brothers, the running backs, and then those great receivers – Really, I think it's about, you know, not making mistakes, not doing something that could cost your team the football game. And I think Urban's done a really good job of that this year. Uh, he's been able to push the ball downfield to Bua a lot, which has re- really helped their team and gives them that explosive aspect. Um, you know, he's got the security blanket in Adria, as Jadrian knows well. Uh, just, you know, get, get, the, get the ball to him and he'll make plays for you. And then, you know, like I said, with those two backs back there, I know uh, Florian's been hurt for a lot of the year, but yeah. 
I saw up, up close and personal what he could do last year when I played against him with Graz. So with him and his brother, just kind of getting them the ball and letting them go to work, I think Erdman does a good job of kind of playing point guard, just, you know, keeping everybody happy, getting getting his guys touches and then making the explosive plays to Bua when they're needed. Yeah, and, you know, talk about being healthy at the right time, right? You get Adrian back, you get Florida back. You know, obviously they were banged up early in the season. I'm talking about, like, week one, like, against Raiders like they even know people even know like how they're gonna pull that off and then ultimately it ended up you know they had they end up had a great season but you know they're gonna be getting some guys back who I think they'll they'll definitely uh need in this game as you mentioned um but you know the old adage in the football world is if you have if you have two quarterbacks you don't you don't have one obviously you know so uh, so Lee started most of the season this year they Hamburg with, uh, with a little bit two quarterback system towards the end, and then uh, and then last week we saw Mo Money start before he got before he got hurt a little bit. So, uh, Jan, if you were if you were Hamburg, obviously we don't know the injury of a uh, of, of, of Mac, but if you were Hamburg, if you were Hamburg, who would you start in this game? Would you would you stick with uh, Salih? I I think we know what it is. I think he has a tossy too. Uh, in German, it's a shoulder Ecklenksperrung. So. He uh, he he he. Uh, how do you say? Broke his collarbone, so he's definitely gonna be oh, out for this game. So this he's is gone. this is this is game for sure. Then it's CSA's game for sure because didn't you see on like even on t- television you saw it popped out and that's why they couldn't put him back in and I kind of told that CSA is gonna be the start and I think that's what you should do because um, in important games you just can't leave any questions on the field, especially for your team. So if you go yeah. in there with a hurt quarterback. Um, who might then not finish the game, you know, like it just makes, and then Sally might come in or whoever would come in. I think it just, yeah, wouldn't give too much comf- wouldn't make the team too comfortable. So I definitely stick with Sally. And I think also the the mindset was the whole year for Sally and the whole team to go in with Sally and go get with him to the championship game with the playing style they have. You know, might maybe Moritz won the job because he was better, but I think this is what it was meant to be. So yeah. I think uh, everybody knows what they're getting into. They're prepared for it the whole year. And at the end of the day, I mean, we talk about the quarterbacks, but I definitely don't think this game is going to end up being the game of the quarterbacks. It's going to be the game of the defenses, and they're going to make the big plays and win this game for their teams um, on both sides. Because I think the Hamburg defense just needs to stop Vienna like Frankfurt did, which I think they're capable of, yeah. same as... Vienna's defense needs to force Hamburg to make mistakes because if you force Hamburg to make mistakes, force Sally to throw the ball off, and then maybe, you know, because he hasn't been too accurate, he hasn't been forced to play, uh, throw the ball in important situations. You stop the running game. Maybe Glenn, who's in the past fumbled a lot, you forced him to Junger. make mistakes. It's, yeah, it's, it's Vienna's game. So I think, uh, I mean, we're going to talk about the QBs, but at the end of the day, I think it comes down to, to the defenses. So let me ask you. Let me ask you this thing, Jan. If you're if you're the offensive quarter, if you're the OC for Hamburg, how would you attack the Vienna defense? Uh, I, I, I think I think that's a that's a that's a rough one. Um, but I stick with what got you to the dance, right? It's it's yeah. give Glenn Tong the ball, but be a little more creative with it. You know, they have two weeks of preparation with a very professional program. I think Jadrin can tell you much more about how professional Vienna works because he's been there for a year. Um, and I think that's just you got to get more creative. You can't just give Tong the ball on powers and tosses and then think <laughs> it gets the job done, you know, and then maybe yeah. throw PA pass once in a while. Um, the key, I think, is get those cheap yards to Jordan, get those cheap yards to Gene Constant, you know, spread the ball around and then get explosive plays with with, uh, with Tonga. Um, I think that's the way Hamburg needs to go and get as much pressure off Sally as they can because, I mean, as, as we saw this season, and that's the reason why I put Mac in, doesn't seem that too comfortable in his plan. And yeah. uh, I think that's the that's the way Hamburg can manage this game. So let's flip it then. Someone who's been on, you know, both sides of the fields for Vienna and Hamburg, Jadrian, if you're Vienna, right? How do you how do you attack the Hamburg defense? Obviously, you know, number one defense in the league, a vicious front seven, guys on the back end who, you know, can lock anyone down the league. Um, so how would you how would you attack that Hamburg defense if you're Vienna? I think you first you got, you got to go watch the Barcelona tape because they're the only team to be able to successfully move the true, ball true. a little bit and beat them. Um, Coach uh, Weidinger had a great game plan uh, there. He, he tried to get the ball in and out of Zach's hands really quickly, a bunch of screens. I think they ran a draw right before the, the, 
halftime there for a touchdown. Uh, uh, Zach scrambled for like an 80-yard run on a QB draw. So I think you just have to try and neutralize that pass rush as much as you can. Uh, I think this the matchup with Hamburg's D-line versus any O-line in the league is, yeah. is crazy. They're just so much more talented up front there than anyone else. I mean, you got Kasim, a seven-year NFL vet. You got Yaboa Evans, who's an unbelievable freak in the middle. Then you got on the other side, you got Gio coming off the edge. You've got Big His Will that's a run stuffer. You got yeah. Nelson, who was one of the best players from Berlin forever. You go six, seven deep on that D-line, and you're like, holy crap, these are all studs. So you don't want to get in a game of being behind the chains. You got to be able to run the ball a little bit. You got to be able to quick pass. And then at some point in the game, it's going to come a moment where you've run the ball, you've quick screened them enough, you've thrown quick passes that maybe the pass rush won't be there 100%. And then you got to take some shots. Uh, Hamburg's a primarily too high cover four team. They mix yeah. in a few other coverages. They've done some man, but you're putting your guys in stressful situations, either whether that be safety or corner. And Vienna of all the teams has enough firepower to match up. I think Jackson probably has the strongest arm of any quarterback in the league. He can get it out there 65, 70 yards. So um, if there is a guy, a team that matches up versus Hamburg, Vienna does it pretty well in offense. They got a big, strong O line. It's just going to come down to play calling and Jackson being very smart with the ball, living to punt sometimes if he has to, and not forcing anything and turning the ball over. Most definitely. And, you know, we talk about this game with, you know, the defenses and, you know, how aggressive they are and stuff like that. So, you know, for, for Hamburg, obviously you got Lamar and you got Gene on the outside and, you know, with a, with a vicious front seven, you obviously want to get the ball out quick, you know, for the whole, obviously not the whole game, but is CSA going to be able, this is for Connor, is CSA going to be able to do enough from the quarterback position to, not saying he has to win this game, but put this team in position to win this game. I think it, it's kind of like Jadrian said, where you you know you have to know when to punt. You you can't be trying to go deep every play. Yeah. He has those two excellent receivers in Constant and Jordan, and you know it's about taking the quick game to them, throwing out the bubble screen when Vienna tries to play a heavy box, handing the ball off to number seven, who I think is the best back in the league, and you know just slow, you know, taking your three, four yards of play, moving the chain, staying out of third and long. And then, like Jadrian said, there'll be one or two times in the game where maybe they bust the coverage. I, they don't do it often. Old Louis <laughs> Horvath does a great job keeping those guys lined up. And they've got they're a really talented secondary. But there'll be one or two times when Gene can get behind Gene can get behind those DPs and you got to capitalize on that. And I think CSA has done a pretty good job from what I've seen this year of you know, once or twice a game, really making guys pay. And to me, that to me, that's what it's going to come down to. Um, I, in my opinion, I think it's going to be a pretty low scoring game. Both defenses yeah. are absolutely stacked. Yeah. So, you know, you it's just about hitting those shots when they're, when they're there because they're not going to be there often. So before we make picks, I actually this last question, uh, Connor. Um, in this in this matchup, you know, what's the what's the one matchup you're looking forward to to, to watching in this game? That's easy because they're, they're both my boys, but Thomas Schnurra against Glenn Tunga. Uh, in my opinion, Thomas Schnurra is the best European linebacker in the ELF. If he's not an ELF all-star, then you might as well cancel the whole thing. He's <laughs> smart. He's a great athlete. Uh, he's a great leader on that defense. And like I said before, I believe Glenn Tunga is the best running back in the league. So to get those two bulldogs matched up against each other, <laughs> beating the whole, I, I can't wait to watch it. Most definitely. And, and that's, and that's going to be different because we're obviously, you know, we're talking about like the receivers and stuff like that. We all know about Glenn and, you know, you're going to have to, you know, have an eight man box if you, if you want to stop him. But, you know, sometimes there's nothing like a good old like Oklahoma drill in the middle of the game where, you know, two guys meet, meet in the hole and, you know, and they, and they buckle up and see what's up. So, Jan, let's uh, let's get to some picks, man. Who you got winning this game? I, I've, I've actually actually got Hamburg win this game again. I just think the defense is it's just I haven't seen Bring the bell, like Jan? Yes, I'm ringing, ringing the bell. I'm, I'm ringing the bell, and I, I think the reason Edabali came back and got healthy again this year, and you see it is to win this championship. And it's man, the, the guy played NFL. He's not one of the yeah. IPP players who got it handed to him. He's he, he played NFL for seven years, fought his yeah. way in the roster. Is an incredible athlete, best player in this league, um, and he has a set of players around him that are just hungry and ready to eat. And that the team is meant to win this game. It's like the 
I think it's going to be one of those Tampa Bay Buccaneers Super Bowls against the Raiders, you know. <laughs> uh, go Tampa Bay, man. I <laughs> think uh, Jadrian might like that. So I, I, I'm actually picking Hamburg running 16-7 to 7 against Vienna. I don't think Wait. Vienna... Uh, I think what, you, what score did you pick? 16-7. to 16-7, okay. Uh, I think it's going to be like a touchdown from the Hamburg offense, but then like three field goals out of good field position that the Hamburg defense is going to get them. Yeah. I, I really don't... I, I don't see... How how Vienna is gonna gonna put a lot of points on them? Just the defense is just too damn good. Well, it's, it's definitely gonna be interesting. For a second, I thought you said sixty to seven. I was like, oh, no, 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 hell no, hammering the <laughs> over. No, no, 16. <laughs> yeah, 16. I, got, I got you. So let's go to the let's go to the Tampa Bay uh, native, JJ. Who you got one in this game, man? Can I can I watch the drive of each offense first before I answer that? Gosh, man, uh, <laughs> that's tough, dude. Yeah, this is a well, this is a pick between like your two ex girlfriends, it's, right? It's crazy, right? <laughs> man. I think I think Vienna's built to to play more spread teams, but can they put eight nine in the box and stop the run? Yeah, <sighs> that's crazy. Is Jackson gonna relax and settle in and have the game of his life? Man, obviously, I think everyone's heavy on Hamburg to to win, but if you put if you if you made me pick, I will take Vienna. Vienna. Yeah, I'll pick you up. Oh, a really, a really oh. tight game. <laughs> I'll say like 24-21. I think it'll be a few more points than most people are expecting. Yeah. I think there's going to be a turnover or two from each side. Um, but two great defenses. Um, to me, the key is stopping the run. And can Jackson settle in and, and relax and not get flustered by that D-line? If he can just do okay, I, I like Vienna. Most definitely. Well, Connor, let's, uh, let's finish this thing off, man. Who you got? Are you well, ringing the bell? Are you ringing the bell, or are you skull action here, man? You know, I I think everybody's pretty familiar with the Hamburg defense. Uh, <laughs> no one more so than me after they knocked me out for the season. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think Thomas Schnurra and Luis Horvat and Ooh. Florian Sudi, those guys hear everyone talking about the Hamburg defense, and you know they're saying, "Why is no one talking about us? Why is no one talking about what we just did to the league MVP Zach Edwards last week?" You know, I think. I think they're feeling a little disrespected. And in my opinion, Chris Kaleka is the best head coach in the league. And they have a great coaching staff. Offensively, I think Erdman will push the ball down the field. And in my opinion, I think they'll make one more play than Hamburg. And they're, both teams will run the ball. I don't know how much success they'll have doing it, but they'll try to run the ball. So the clock will be moving. It'll be a low scoring game. And I think it'll be, I'll go 14 to 10 Vienna. We're super low scoring. I mean, we're going yeah. under the under in this one. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's my pick. Well, there we go, man. Well, hey, fellas, I appreciate you going on. I'll be making my pick later in the week, you know, Ooh. after I get some friendly advice from uh, for all my, my guests I got coming in. But, hey, I appreciate you guys coming on, man. Thanks for having us. Most definitely, Thanks, most definitely. It's going to be a, it's gonna be a fun matchup. Definitely going to be a great one uh, to watch. I'm excited to watch it. But, um Hey, man, this won't be the last time, you know, I chop it up with you guys. Um, it's definitely appreciated. And, you know, we'll talk soon, all right? Well, that's all we have for today. Thank you guys for tuning in. Keep in mind, all week long, what we're going to do is we're going to team up with uh, our partners over at Kingdom or Teamwear and give out some free swag throughout the whole week um, on behalf of base coverage. Uh, so shout out to today's winner who we have on the screen right now for supporting Athletes Farm and supporting Kingdom or Teamwear. Remember, all you got to do is, Follow Athletes Forum on Instagram and follow K Noah uh, Teamwear on Instagram. Any of chance in uh, to win some free gear on behalf of our team over at K Noah Teamwear. So, hope you guys enjoyed the the show. We got more coming this week. A lot of shows. We're gonna hear from the players from each team. We're gonna hear from guys from the league, guys that watched and covered the league, and we're gonna break down this matchup leading into next Friday, where I will make my final pick on who I think will will win this game. It's definitely gonna be a it's definitely going to be a fun one to watch. But thank you guys for tuning in. Tune in tomorrow for our next episode. Uh, we will talk to uh, the Hamburg Sea Devil players uh, covering uh, the game and get a little bit of their perspective heading into uh, uh, clocking for, for the championship game. So we'll talk soon. This won't be the last time we chop it up. Nobody,